In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the Facebook Conversions API using Zapier. Now, this is going to allow you to pass leads directly from your email service provider into Facebook without just relying on the Facebook pixel. And Zapier is a great way to do it because it's really fast and easy to set up. So let's get into it. The first thing you're going to need is a Zapier account or Zapier, depending on how you say it. Um, so set up your free account with Zapier, that's all you need and log in and you'll see a screen like this. Now what we're going to do is click make a zap and from here you're going to choose your email service provider. So I'm going to just choose active campaign now and I've already connected it so it doesn't ask me to connect active campaign but if you haven't connected your email service provider before it's going to ask you to do that so just follow those steps to connect it it's really quick and easy. Next choose your event here now I want to run this zap every time a contact is added inside active campaign so I'm going to go every time a new contact a new or updated contact sorry is added so that means whenever a new lead or purchase happens inside of Active Campaign, it's going to get pushed across to Facebook via the Conversions API. And then Facebook can match that to any ad campaigns that I've got running. Now I just choose my Active Campaign account, hit continue, and then the trigger, you just choose your list that you want. So which list uh, is going to cause these triggers? So whenever somebody gets added to this list in my Active Campaign account, it's going to trigger or if they get updated, it also triggers. And then skip unsubscribe events, you want to click true. Now what you're telling Zapier here is if somebody unsubscribes from your email list, you don't want that to get pushed across to the Facebook Conversions API. And the, the reason we're choosing true for this is because we don't want those unsubscribes getting pushed across because we're trying to track conversions and an unsubscribe is never going to be a conversion from our ads. So now we just click continue all right, and so now we can test that portion of our zap. So I'm going to click test trigger and it will pull in a recent email subscriber. Now, if you uh, want to test this yourself, I recommend setting this up and before you click test, go over and sign up to your own email list so that you will have a new contact added so you've got some data to pull in. Now, you can see here it's brought in the data for me, which means I can move on to the next step by clicking continue. So the next step is to send the data over to the Facebook Conversions API. So what we want to do in this step is connect to the Facebook API. So we're going to type in Facebook Conversions and select that one. Now choose our action event. So this depends on what conversion you want to send to Facebook. If you want to send a lead event, then you choose send lead event. If it's a purchase event, then you can send purchase event or send funnel event or send an other event. Now, in this case, I'm going to send a lead event because I chose in the first step, whenever a new or updated contact gets added in active campaign. If I wanted to do purchases, I would go back to step one and I would choose whenever a tag gets added in active campaign and I would choose my purchase tag. So that whenever somebody gets tagged as being a new customer, I would now in step two, choose send purchase event and send that purchase over to the conversions API. But in this example, we're running with lead. So I'm going to choose send lead event. Now we click continue. We need to sign in now to our Facebook conversions. So we're basically connecting Zapier to Facebook now to give it permission to pass that data across. So click sign in to Facebook conversions. Once that is done, you simply choose your account hit continue. All right, now the action source here, uh, you can either choose website or email, it doesn't really matter in this case, I'm gonna choose website because the activity of signing up to my email list happened on my website. Next up, we need to select our Facebook Business Manager account. So that's just one quick note here. You do need to be using the Facebook Business Manager in order to set this up. So I'm gonna choose mine now. Now the event time, oops, before you do that, choosing the pixel. So you have to choose your pixel here. So I'm gonna choose my pixel. Now it's important that you choose the pixel that is associated with these conversion events. So you wanna choose the pixel that's linked to the ad account that you're going to be running the ads from. Now down here, we move on to event time. Now you can actually provide the event time to uh, Zapier to pass over to Facebook here. If you don't select an event time, meaning the time that the conversion occurred, it's going to just send Facebook the time that the zap was triggered. So I'm going to leave it blank in this case because I'm happy for it to just send the time that the zap triggers. Uh, if you are using the free version of Zapier, just be aware that it can be up to 15 minutes delayed 
So I'm using a premium version of Zapier, which means that my zaps get triggered instantly, but yours, if you're using the free version, could be delayed up to 15 minutes. So in that case, you can choose the event time. So you would choose uh, from here, select this, and you can actually go in and select from step one, the date and time that the email subscriber was added to your email service provider. So if I go down here, you can see the date time here tells me when that person was added to my email list. So I could simply select that and that would provide that information to Facebook so that the conversion time is actually aligned with when they signed up to my email list. And it avoids that problem that you can have with Zapier delaying things. But as I said, I'm going to just leave this blank. Now, moving on, uh, the event ID, we don't need to put anything in there. Uh, event source URL, again, uh, you can put that in if you want to. Uh, so if, let's say, it happened on my homepage, I can pop that in there. But I'm going to be getting these from multiple sources, so I'm going to leave that blank. Test event code, now we're going to go and get that from Facebook now and pop that in. So you want to go over to your Facebook ad manager. From there, click on the menu over here on the left, the business tools menu, and you want to go to the events manager. If you don't see it there, you might need to scroll down the list and find it. But for me, events manager is at the top in my shortcuts because I use it regularly. So click events manager. And now from here, if we simply click test events, this is where we can test our conversion API events and also our pixel, of course, but we care about the conversion API at the moment. So over here, we've got test server events on the right. And down here, we've got this text here. Copy that text to the clipboard. That's your test event code. Go back to Zapier. And we're going to paste that in right here. Okay, now down here, we can choose to opt out of ads delivery optimization. So what this is, is telling Facebook, if you only want this data to be used for attribution, meaning for tracking and attributing your conversions to particular ads. But I actually want this data to be used to help optimize my campaigns as well, because I'm, I want to feed in this lead information and Facebook to use its algorithm to then improve the performance of my ads by finding more people like my current leads. So I'm going to choose false. I do not want to opt out of that optimization. Uh, data processing options. Now, this is related to the new laws in California um, that limit some data processing stuff. You can enter things in here, it's optional. If you don't enter anything in here, Facebook will automatically determine whether that person is in California and treat their data appropriately. So I just leave that blank at this point in time. So now we go down here, this is a really important part, it's the customer information. This is the data that you're passing back to Facebook via the conversions API so that it can match that data to the particular ad that led to the conversion. So you wanna pass back as much data as you have available, meaning you need to match as many of these fields as you possibly can. For me, it's very limited. All I collected was a name and email. So I'm going to enter the email here from step one, and then I'm going to choose the first name as well which is all I collected. But if this is for a purchase event, you would probably have email, phone number, first name, last name, city, state, postcode, and you should match all of those fields uh, if and when you can. All right, so we go down here. You can choose to show all fields. There are some other fields we can pass. If you choose true, it will display them for us now. So I'll show you that. So you can pass date of birth, gender, and a few other things here. I'm not going to pass those now because I don't have that information. But again, if you've got it, pass it across. Scroll down here. Now, if you want to send custom parameters for your ads, then you should enter it here. Because this is a lead, I'm not actually going to enter it. But because I know that a lot of people watching this video are going to be setting this up for their purchases, I'm going to show you how to set up your purchase conversion values to push them across to Facebook as well. All right, so it happens down here in the additional data section. So the first thing you want to pass through is the value. So we put in value, and now this is important that you enter this correctly. Now, if you're not sure what to enter, just click on this custom parameters button here. That's going to bring you over to Facebook, and it'll allow you to link up uh, and see uh, what the field names are that you should be entering. So we've got value right here. Uh, and you can scroll down and see what you're meant to enter. So value, and you enter just a simple numeric value here, or currency, and then you enter, for example, USD. So you've got to enter a valid ISO 4217 three-digit country code. So you can click that and see the list of country codes if you want to find the one for your particular country. So back over to Zapier. Zapier, Zapier, I don't know. Uh, and we, we can put in the value of our um, product. <coughs> click next, and you would put currency and then USD. 
and you would simply then click continue. Now, I'm doing leads, of course, so I'm going to remove those because it's not a purchase event that I'm sending across, but I'm going to click continue. So I'm going to go ahead and click test uh, and review. All right, so it says a lead event was sent to Facebook conversions just now. So we know that Zapier thinks, all right, we're all good. I've sent the data to Facebook and Facebook has sent me a positive response back saying they received it. But we want to make sure that it's actually working properly in Facebook. So to do that, we go back to the events manager and we go here. We're still in our test events screen and you can already see that we've got a lead processed received from the server, meaning not from the pixel and that it's worked and we received it this time. Now I can click here and filter by server uh, just to double check it, but you can see we've actually received our lead event through the Facebook Conversions API and it's all working fine. Okay, so there's one final step to complete before this is all good to go and that is to go back to Zapier and make sure we remove that test code because we wanna make sure that once we set this thing up and have it up and running, it's not telling Facebook that this is test data. We wanna remove that. So we go back to our um, send lead event. We go to set up action here, scroll down and simply delete the test event code. So now Facebook knows that any data coming through is live and it's good to use. So we click continue. And of course, after that, we don't need to test again, but we do need to make sure we turn on our zap. So once the zap is turned on, you are officially good to go and everything is live. It's as simple as that. At this point, you now have your zap set up to pass over lead information via the Facebook Conversions API rather than simply relying on the Facebook Pixel. It's that simple. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, please just give it a like. That's all I ask. It really does help me a lot. Even though it's quick and easy for you to do, it makes a huge difference to the channel, so I really appreciate it. Or if you want to hear more from me, make sure you hit that subscribe button, click that little bell to get notified every time I release a new video. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.